Indeed, Michael, we're going to take a check on the team news. Well, Cork announced their starting formation, as you know, in midweek, and it contained Ben O'Connor, but that was conditional on a late fitness check, and the news is that he has failed that fitness test, and he's off, he's replaced by Keon O'Connor, no relation. This year's captain is Pat Mulcahy, who will play just behind the much-acclaimed half-back line of Gardner, Curran and O'Halpine, while the most experienced member of the team is Brian Corcoran, playing today in his 34th championship match. But that tails by comparison with Clare's starting 15. There it is, and it's Davy Fitzgerald's 55th big match. Then the Lowens and Shawnee McMahon between them have played in 134 championship games. The newest member of the team is last year's debutant, Barry Nugent, the right corner forward. And there is a late change by Clare as well. One omission from their selected side. David Hoy, the right half-back, is off. He's replaced by Fergal Lynch, but I don't think he's going to play there. It's Clare who won the toss. We'll have all the action from Thurlis coming up for you right after this. And with me here in studio for this clash of Cork and Clare is Tomás Mulcahy and Ger Lachnan. Ger, how's the feeling in Clare like today? Feeling is very good. I think there's great confidence in Clare, especially because of the way they have prepared for this game. We all know they have travelled all over the world nearly tired <laughs> to get themselves right for it and invested an awful lot in the half hour line. Fergal Lynch will play there today. Yeah. And then you have David McMahon and, and, and of course from last year, Tony Campbell, the huge men in that half hour line. I think for Clare, most depends on what happens there in that half hour line. For Cork, I suppose we have to see what that hunger is like. We saw in the previous match here, you know, it's very hard to define, they're very hard to be sure what champions' hunger is going to be like. If Cork have the hum hunger, they'll be very, very ha hard to stop, even with the loss of Ben O'Connor. I posed a question earlier on the programme, could we see the two Ireland champions beaten today? That prospect has now grown, obviously. Yes, and uh, traditionally over the last two or three years, Michael Cork have been slow starters in the, the Muscle Championship campaign. But they've been, I suppose, since last September or last uh, August, they're in the All-Ireland semi-final. This match, once the draw was made, everybody be, has been waiting for this game. So Cocker will under guard. Uh, it was probably known all week that Ben O'Connor Warren was, wasn't going to start this match. Keen O'Connor is coming in. Traditionally a cornerback, half-back. It's a big gamble, putting him up half-forward, you know. But again, he's played very well in, in recent challenge matches. The team as a whole has played very, very well in, champ in challenge matches over the last couple of weeks. But at the end of the day, it's all about championship. And once the championship, as George said, Clare have put so much effort been over to Bishop Abbey in the UK, Hello, yeah, there's yeah. been a few commando courses and <laughs> running rivers late into the mornings and stuff like that <laughs> as well, you know, so, but at the end of the day, it's a small little ball that counts, you know, and uh, I think Cork have that little bit more in, in the craft of the hurling skill side of it, and uh, they will actually win this game by maybe three or four points. Let's see what happens, you know, they say the action doesn't really start to get into the quarterfinals in these kind of games, don't believe a word of it, this is the Munster Championship, it's Michael Dyken and Jared Canning in the commentary box. You know, Michael, I can remember the night that Cork won the All-Ireland and you were interviewing Sean O'Gohal being last year's captain and you said, well, what about uh, next year, this being 2006 and so on? And he said that, I will just enjoy tonight, we'll enjoy the winter and we let 2006 look after itself. Michael Dignan, it's come and this is the big test. It has, it's come around very, very quickly. I suppose the key thing today is how will Cork cope with the loss of uh, Ben O'Connor really... He scored 1-7 in last year's All-Ireland final and they wouldn't have won it without him. But apart from that, the modern game that they play, the running game, it, he really is the linchpin. When the half-back line of midfield come through, they're invariably looking for Ben O'Connor at the end of their move and he takes on the ball and finishes. So they don't have him today. Will they resort to the more traditional then long ball into the full forward line? Joe Dean has been starved over the last couple of years. So I think you'll see the ball being played a lot quicker into Brian Carson and Joe Dean. But Clare... You know, Clare have a lot of changes. I think they'll, they'll make wholesale changes today. You're uh, expecting Tony Griffin perhaps to end up in midfield? I think Tony Griffin will play midfield. I think Fergal Lynch will play in the half-forward line. I think Brian O'Connell will play wing-back. You know, we'll wait and see for those. So but Brian O'Connell, you think, could be in in place of David Hoey? I think it'll be Brian O'Connell at wing-back. I, uh, I think Tony Griffin midfield. I think Fergal Lynch sent forward beside Tony Carmody, Dermot McMahon. And then maybe even Nugent could drift out the field a bit and leave Gilligan and Martin inside on their own. That's all remains to be seen. But it's a big, big year for Clare. It's the last stand for Brian Lowe and Shawnee McMahon, maybe Colin Lynch and Anthony Daly, the manager. He's brought in all his own people this year. He's Ollie Baker with him. Um, there's no links to the old era, to Gerald Nan's era. So it's really, he's said out his stall, this is my team. We want to live by my sword and he could die or live by it this year. It's a huge game. No back door will come into it today. There'll be huge passion in this game, and I expect Clare will come out on top. Isn't that in an interesting point? The fact that there is this back door, and yet for Clare, forget about back doors. They want to atone for last August in Croke Park, the All Ireland semi final. They were, what, six points up? They should have won that day. They didn't. 
and they have been waiting for this moment to come. And yet there is another chance later on, even if they're beaten here, but no guarantee that they're going to get into the quarterfinals. OK, eight of the top nine are going to be there, we know that much, but there could be one very hard qualifying group. No, there could be, but you know, I think both of these teams will qualify, there's no doubt about that, but for different reasons, they want to go out of Turles with wins today. Care for confidence going forward, they want to do it straight down the middle, and, and Cork want to retain their crown in style to go for the same run style. They're not interested in, in the backdoor system. So for all those reasons, they're set up for an intriguing battle. I think there will be huge passion out there today, and Cork might just be that little bit rustier, I think. They don't really know where their farm is at, and for that reason, I think Clare might just, that little bit of passion might just get them over the line. OK, you've touched on style a little bit there in what you're saying. Cork love to play the running game. They want to play a fast game. They want to play the flanks and the wings as well. By comparison, Clare are big and strong in the forward line. Five of the six forwards over six feet tall. They want to condense it to some extent, surely. Well, they will. And you, you mentioned there, Cork, Clare should have won last year. I don't know, should they have won? They collapsed completely in the last ten minutes. So they will have worked hugely under fitness over the winter to make sure that doesn't happen again. If they had taken their chances last year, they would have been further ahead, but they might not still have held out. So all those things are up for grabs. I think the Clare half-hour line is the key, as Tomas said in, in the studio. They're big, huge men. They have to win their share of the puck out. Because if John Gardner, Ronan Corn and Sean O'Gahalpin have been driving this car team forward over the last five or six seasons, and really it's down to those three players. And watch out for David Fitzgerald's puck outs. You know, they'll be astute. They'll be looking for loose men on the move. But I, don't, I think Clare will have tactics up. I think Barry Nugent will play out the field and try to leave room for Mark and Gilligan inside as well. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see uh, Daly's tactics uh, versus John Allen's more traditional approach I think today. Nugent of course was picked to play against Cork last year but missed it because of injury and Andrew Quinn played in his stead. They were expecting 40,000 people here, not quite sure if it's reached that capacity, I think it's below that probably around about 35, 36,000 but before all of that, before the action gets underway, people turning to face the tricolour on a still day in Thurles for the playing of our own Nivian Back in Clare for the opening 35 minutes by comparison with the wind which uh, I was experiencing in Salt Hill yesterday, this is a pretty calm day. Very little sunshine around, it's been a bright day nonetheless. Conditions ideal, the pitch is first class, absolutely first class. The referee is Barry Kelly from Westmead, match underway. And straight away it's Cork trying to initiate the opening attack through Niall McCarthy. Pressure on the clearbacks immediately, runs on towards Brian Corkwood, looking to try and get the measure of Brian Lohan here. Line ball, the outcome. Well, they had quite a battle, Corcoran and Lohan in the semi, and Lohan came out on top that day, or in the semi last year, that is. This is now McCarthy, and that ball has gone over the bar. Bright start made by Cork. First attack yields a point for Niall McCarthy from Carrick 2. Just got around Shawnee McMahon here, given a bit of freedom, stayed on his feet well, and found the target. Yeah, you can see Cork up in the tempo straight away. Quick line ball. Clare have made those changes that predicted. Brian O'Connell at wing back, Tony Griffin at midfield, and uh, Fergal Lynch at left half forward. That's Dermot McMahon. Lobbed in there towards Markham. Comes back out again. This time it's Barry Nugent sending it in and sending it over the bar. What a very good start by both teams. Barry Nugent from Ennis from the era old club. That's a great score. Well, showing us what he might have uh, contributed in the semi had he been fit last week or last year, and there was Markham who set it up for him. Yeah, he had a great league campaign last year, and that'll give his confidence to his confidence the world a good job. But it's all about 2006. Jerry H Quinn. This time there's some holding, and the referee has signalled it's going to be a free in. Watch this again here. That was a wonderful catch a little while ago by Jerry Quinn from Curra Finn. So the first free of the match for Clare to be taken by Niall Gilligan. George, just a little thing there, Pat Mulcahy, you know, straight away ticked there. I think it's one weakness in his game. He fouls a lot. He was sent off in the other club final. And, you know, he'll want to be careful today because it's something that has been kind of creeping in his game over the last couple of years. And he's the captain, of course, this year. Gilligan striking and Gilligan putting this ball over. Clare take the lead, first time. Thanks to Niall Gilligan playing today in his 40th championship match for the Banner. There's a wonderful atmosphere. Always is in the Munster Championship. Let's see who wins the puck outs. Tony Griffin in midfield lets that one drop down. Niall McCarthy trying to get onto it. Sean O'Halpine trying to step in. At one stage there was a suggestion that uh, O'Halpine, last year's captain, might even play in midfield. 
That's one there by Jerry O'Connor. Comes spilling back out again here. McMahon trying to take it up for Clare. Instead, it's Colin Lynch as a support player outside. O'Connell sent in. Again, movement across the line here by Clare. That's driven over there by Gilligan. Switch of positions for him. Straight, ball straight to John Gardner. Good block down there. Fergal Lynch, the one who was blocking. Chopping, in fact, according to the referee. And a free out, and John Gardner goes down. Straight away goes for the referee. And what's the referee going to do? Having words there with Tony Griffin and warning him about that. Donald O'Cusack, the goalkeeper there as well. They will be taking the free and their attention immediately is for John Gardner from the Lapierce Club. Yeah, I think it was Dermot McMahon that just came in there with a little slip. Dermot McMahon on the one who has been spoken to now by the referee. The referee got the right man. Yeah, there wasn't much in it, Joe. John Gardner made a, I think he made a bit of a fist of it there. He rolled around a little bit soccer style, but he's back in his feet now. Donald O'Cusack looking for Brian Corcoran. Up against Brian Lohan. That'll be quite a match to see who comes out on top there. Cork trying to get the ball. It's Brian Corcoran who has it. Trying to feed it ahead there for Jerry O'Connor. Dangerous situation coming in from the wings. And everybody converging on him. And in the end, I think it was uh, Jerry Quinn who got the decisive touch there. Comes up to Ben, to uh, Joe Dean. Picked up here by Colin Lynch. On the way out of danger. Swept way down the field towards Barry Nugent. On his left-hand side, looking for a second. Does it curly? Not quite. Two shots at the target then for Barry Nugent. But successful with only one of them. This is Jerry O'Connor moments ago here. He had beaten Brian Lowen. Watch for the halfback coming across. And Quinn connected with a wonderful intervention. David McMahon picking up that loose clearance. Straight back in into the goalkeeper's hands, paused for a moment, considered his options, and Donald O'Kilzak sweeps it away. First to the ball, however, is Colin Lynch, or Missy Casey. Deep one in, batted out there by David O'Sullivan. Dangerous once again. This time it's Gilligan, got a turn, 20 metres out. Striking, stopped by the goalkeeper, comes straight back out again. Once more, it's out towards Alan Markham, and David O'Sullivan goes across. Markham on the ground, free in for Clare. Yeah, John, Alan Markham had no hurl there, and, you know, silly free for David O'Sullivan. Here's the ball back in around the square again. Watch Niall Gilligan here. Great save out by Donald Lowe Cusack. A little bit risky maybe sometimes to bring a ball down like that. But Markham with no hurl here. And Dermot just come in at, at the back. No need to resolve. Silly free. Certainly was that. It gives Clare another chance then to put over another score. And is going to take it will be Niall Gilligan. And the notebook is shown there to Dermot O'Sullivan. Can't afford to give chances to a sharpshooter like Gilligan from Six Mile Bridge. Plenty of jeering from the town end where all the Cork fans are taking up station. And that's gone over the bar. And a second for Niall Gilligan. Not going to miss easy chances like that one there. 3-1 to Clare. Donald O'Cusack trying to find a man with this, but it's batted down by Tony Griffin. They've done the homework. They've been aware of the kind of puckouts that Donald O'Cusack has been hitting in the last couple of seasons. They're trying to win each and every one of them. Comes back out here to Tony Carmody in a great league campaign. Across towards Barry Nugent. 45 metres out. Partly blocked down that time by Brian Murphy. Pressure on once again with Colin Lynch. Stop this time. It's Rowan Curran coming out. Centre half back for court on his left-hand side. Under pressure immediately there was Jerry O'Grady. Helped out, however, by Brian O'Connell. O'Connell, the wing back this afternoon. Here's Brian Lowen. Trying to get the ball out to a colleague. Succeeds. It's Jerry O'Grady sweeping it away downfield. Coming across for was Fergal Lynch. Missed it completely. Ronan Curran instead. Helped out here by John Gardner. John Gardner is fouled. Well, he's been in the wars. And it's a free out. Foul committed by Fergal Lynch. Free to Cork. Man is going to take it will be John Gardner. Last year's All-Star centre half-back, remember. 
battered down here. Tony Griffin once again. Back down into the inside forwards, looking for Gilligan. Won by John Gardner once more. Good clearance, right into the mix there. Ian O'Connor trying to make something of it. Instead, it is Niall McCarthy looking for a support player. It's Jerry O'Connor, the hurler of the year last year. Inside towards Brian Corker, taking on Brian Lowe. Upward angle, trying to get inside. Stopped. Held out momentarily, then gets his shot in. Succeeds, puts it over the bar. Brian Corcoran's first score, sheer persistence, wonderful skill and talent as well, and he's made it three points to two. He wasn't going to give up. No, he wasn't, Jerry. Just early stages, but Niall McCarthy and Brian Corcoran have gotten a lot of ball. Both Brian Lohan and Sean McMahon just struggling a little bit with the pace already. And the clear, clear midfielder dominating and the Cork half-back then begin to come in. So the game is beginning to take on the shape now already. Only eight minutes are gone. Short puck out this time to Jerry Quinn. Huge one down. Nicely connected here by Tony Carmody, looking for the score, and Tony Carmody puts it over the bar in flying farm, the man for minor. Just about eight miles outside Ennis, four points to two, great score by Carmody. Did well, took it to himself, raced away, got inside Ronan Curran's cover, good score. Tuck out towards Keen O'Connor. Falk trying to make some inroads on the half-forward line there. That's Brian O'Connell there connecting with his own player, Tony Griffin. Griffin waiting for it, hit first time into the inside forwards to Barry Nugent. 45 metres out from the target. Off his left-hand side. Another great score by Clare. A second for Barry Nugent. And Clare are leading this match by five points to two. Nugent is absolutely flying it. Brian Murphy would have a reputation as probably being the tightest Martin corner back in the game. Nugent has cleaned him for, a few, for the first three balls that have come into that corner. Two from three. That's his score so far. Excellent shooting. The fans trying to get behind the two teams. Missed by Sean McMahon that time. Not by Colin Lynch. Didn't make a lot of headway, however. Comes once again to Tony Carmody. One so far. They're shooting from distance. They're shooting with accuracy. That's brilliant. Tony Carmody with another. No wonder the fans are happy. Six points to two. Great start then for Clare. Wonderful shooting. All of it from distance. Yeah, and Brian Lohan was the man who set up that attack, blocking down the puck out corner and brought him out, hoping to create space inside and backfired on that occasion. Donald O'Cusack fucking this time to the left-hand side. Keane O'Connor's come across. Went off the hands there of Brian O'Connell. And the right half back this afternoon goes back to do a spell of defending. The line ball to be taken by Sean Ogo Halpine. Sportsman Supreme. Stopped by Tony Griffin. Really does well. Again, providing the ammunition in for the inside forwards and asking serious questions of. Dermot O'Sullivan and company this time pushed because he was on his hands and knees and a free out for Cork who trailed by four but early stages in the first half there he is and that was Alan Markham coming in and colliding with O'Sullivan yeah and it's obvious Jared that Clare have put huge work into the forward line over the winter I, it's a long time since I've seen a Clare team with so many different options they're attacking from all sides big men in the half forward line creating space inside and Nugent obviously the main man so far but Tony Carmery as well picking up where he left off last year Dermot O'Sullivan ready to hit this one dropping 30 metres out Joe Dean with a clean catch Joe Dean going through Joe Dean is saved brilliantly wonderful save by David Fitzgerald destined for the top corner but Fitzgerald had other ideas he's the kind of keeper who comes out off the bus, he's fired up from the moment he arrived at Central Stadium and that was a sensational save it was brilliantly hit by Dean one of the saves of the year I'm sure it'll be, what a piece of goalkeeping and Brian Corker was in immediately after if the goalkeeper had not made a com good and complete connection brilliant absolutely brilliant, Jerry. all that's good in Munster Championship, Joe Dean, small man, what a catch in behind Jerry O'Grady, and did everything right, created space for himself, and a great shot to the top corner, and Davy Fitz, I suppose, like he's done so many times in the past, pulls out a brilliant save, and that should really lift Clare now. Tom Kenny with the resultant 65. Drops it to the right, 
And Cork Jared. unsettled, unnerved. Well, Jared, this is something I said to you before again. Who's going to take these long frees now that Ben O'Connor is out? That's another feature. He's so, so, so sure from those 60, 70, 80 yard frees. He's out now. Tom Kenny missing the first one he got today. So all those things are contributing in Clare's favour. Let's just remember Ben scored a goal in seven in last year's All-Ireland final. He was Cork's only All-Star forward to make the team. He's that important. He's missing. Cork could be in trouble. They have the ball back. And they won a free through Brian Corcoran. Taking on added responsibilities. Clare guilty this time. Oh, just a little bit of rashness. And an opportunity for Joe Dean now to pull it over. Davy Fitzgerald's crossbar. The two managers have certainly prepared their teams brilliantly for this. Jared, that came from a short puck out that went wrong. I'm surprised Clare going with short puckers with the physique of her half hard, and I think it should be playing the ball out. Over the bar from Joe Dean. Well, you've been talking about puckers for the last couple of seasons. They've become <laughs> so important. They have. It's normally Don Low Cusack who's and getting onto it, but there, Davy was badly caught out of the short puckers. I think they're better off let it up there and take their chances in the 50-50 ball. Well, let's see what happens. It's a fascinating match. Once again, the battle for supremacy. Tony Carmody taking it up, getting it around. Timmy McCarthy hasn't been in the match so far. Tony Griffin, again looking for Barry Nugent's corner. Brian Murphy from Bride Rovers has been forewarned. Good pick up this time by Murphy. Little hand toss inside. Not the best of tosses to... Sonogo Halpine did well to get it as far as Kern and Ronan Kern with the help of Jerry O'Connor gets it forward there Tom Kenny's there as well flying through from midfield not for the first time look at the pace he's got to 20 metres that is a sensational score wonderful point by Tom Kenny then all hell broke loose a couple of players clashed after they had left Tom Kenny behind and the referee stepping in immediately, Shawnee McMahon, one of those being spoken to. Referee Barry Kelly stamping his authority immediately here, saying, no nonsense, players have been warned. Didn't see a card. There's three passes there during the space of five yards, and I was saying, what are they at here? Next to release Tom Kelly to space, and what an athlete this man is. Just took off. He was back out in the middle of the field within two seconds. I was just watching him on the way back out. I missed that little incident. I've seen, I've seen greyhounds at Children Park. They haven't broken as fast as that. I wouldn't have a hope against them. David Fitzgerald. Huge one. All the way down towards Barry Nugent. Rising up again. Drops here for Curran. He's gone back. Covered. Done really well. Hand pass to Jerry O'Connor. The experienced heads. Niall McCarthy. Back towards Curran. It comes again. 65 metres out from the target when he lets fly, the umpires are happy, they've raised the white flag and it's over the bar. Ronan Curran coming from centre-half back to hit that one, and it's only his third ever point in championship hurling. Six points to five, quite a match. Clare had their spell of dominance, went 6-2 up, Cork have come back with three unanswered points. Now they come looking for possession and a chance to strike for an equaliser. Brian Murphy up towards Niall McCarthy, keeping a very strong presence there against Sean McMahon. Clare win it back. Runs all the way through to Markham. Markham against David O'Sullivan. There was a jersey tie. David O'Sullivan, the guilty party, and he's already been kicked by the referee. It's going to be a free in. Watch this race for possession again. There's the jersey tug. The number 11 been hauled once and twice. Well, Jared, that's why Markham is in there. He's in there to score goals. You know, in his, when he came on the scene first, he was a proven goal scorer. I know he scored three goals recently against Galway in a challenge match, and that's why they're hoping to get one break inside there. And Sullivan was a big man, might be a little slipped. Surprising that wasn't a yellow card there, you know, because he was in on goal, you know, and uh, Dermot has already been already been ticked. Well, there wasn't a yellow card. No, there wasn't. I'm saying just a surprise it wasn't. Yeah. Now, here comes Niall Gilligan. He's cast aside the black helmet. Same sharpness. Either side. And three points now for Niall Gilligan as Clare stretch their lead. And they lead by seven points to five. On 
unlike the football game, of course, where Tyrone were not the Ulster champions, Cork are the Munster champions as well as the All Ireland champions. How Clare would love to dethrone them. Ronan, or, uh, Ronan Curran across here towards Tian O'Connor. Not making a lot of headway so far. Trying to move now. This is a good ball. Nicely ahead here for Tom Kenny once again, stepping into a top of the right situation. The angle shot, Dean trying to keep it in play. Unsuccessful, puck out to Clare. Good movement, good idea. Angle a bit awkward, two wides now for Cork. That's a quick puck out again, straight to Tony Griffin, nobody marking him. Down towards Barry Nugent, unable to step inside. Line ball. Well, certainly down this wing, uh, Sean Ogre helping I don't think has hit a ball yet since the game started and Barry Murphy is under pressure, Dermot McMahon he's under, I think he's a completely underrated player for the likes of Sean Ogre, he keeps him out of the game he wins plenty of possession and inside Nugent obviously is getting more space because I think Sean Ogre is so close to Dermot McMahon and he's afraid to let him lose so uh, that's definitely where Clare are making the best headway at the moment He's well able to hit a sideline ball, we've seen that in league matches but as I say it doesn't connect all that well but it might yet produce a score Barry Nugent inside and here is Sean Ogre helping Perfectly positioned, out of danger for Cork, up towards Niall McCarthy, there against Shawnee McMahon, runs back there for Brian O'Connell, O'Connell gets a stick to it, to Jim and McMahon, stop this time, this is Jerry O'Connor, dragged back there by McMahon, free to Cork, and he's shown the book. I think we put the who, the, the, who do on him there, um, Jerry missed the line ball, and then he missed the ball there on the ground, just after blow, uh, singing his praises there, but he'll get more chances. Think <laughs> Jerry O'Connor. Big one. Huge one. Over the bar. 7 6. That was from a huge distance out by Jerry O'Connor. Well, what one of the twins can do, he's showing that the other fella can do. Wonderful setting that is Semple Stadium in Thurless. Runs out of play. Line ball once again, this time to Cork. Entrusted to John Gardner. And the man of the moment for Clare, Anthony Daly, who stepped up there as manager. And uh, line ball completely messed. And the referee stepping back in there to adjudicate on this. It was missed completely. Clare felt they could come in immediately. The referee decided he's going to throw it in. John Gardner was one of those preparing to line up for business, but in there instead for Claire is Tony Carmody. They try to work it back here with Jim McMahon. Comes across towards Fergal Lynch. Over once again. Nugent beaten this time by the persistence of Brian Murphy. Good ball up towards Joe Dean. First touch not great. It allowed Jerry O'Grady to get in. Dean gets it back, however. Has Keir O'Connor to his left. Favours. Jerry O'Connor instead on his right, got the last point from a free. This one is sails over the bar, and the teams are level. Two in a row from Jerry O'Connor. Clare 7, Cork 7 in the Munster Championship. Watch about this. This was a wonderful dispossession there by Joe Dean to set it up for Jerry O'Connor. And the All-Ireland champions draw level. Second time the teams have been level in this match. Pressure back on the cork, full back line. Gilligan trying to win it. McMahon was coming on to it. Gilligan again, this time beaten by John Gardner. Gets away from Barry Nugent as well. Partly blocked that time by Griffin. Nugent has it. Blocked partly again this time by John Gardner. Great blocking, hooking, wonderful skills evident in the game. Gee, what a catch! What a catch above Jerry O'Grady. The layoff here towards Brian Corcoran. It runs on instead towards Niall McCarthy. Checking his stride. Taking it by Sean McMahon, who's struggling against Niall McCarthy. That wasn't the best of shots by McCarthy, however. And the ball was well wide of the target. Yeah, that's probably one of the few wayward shots Cork have had. It's really striking me how careful they are when they win possession to use it. You know, they're running with the ball, they're looking up, they're holding it. The last score there, Joe Dean, he was no rush at all. Waited until the man came into space and then played him in, played him in for the score. Shonago Halpin coming across to try and win this puck out. It said it's Brian Murphy who got the last touch. Barnesman is happy that it went off uh, a Clare player. No arguments. Line ball to be taken by Shonago Halpin. 
playing today in his 33rd championship match. Much better connection than the last one he took. Stopped by Brian Lowen. Out he comes, the crowd rise to him, out to Sean McMahon. Two of the greats going back to the 1995 team, down towards Niall Gilligan, who's a sub on the 97 side that won the All-Ireland. And that's out of play, off the stick of Pat Mulcahy. Line ball, and this time it's Tony Griffin who looks like he's going to come across and have a go. Aren't too happy about the position of the line ball. It's meant to be close to the line, and John Allen, as you can see, is very annoyed. Griffin cutting. David O'Sullivan comes out, collides with Killigan, comes back out again here to Tony Cormody. Good block down this time. Comes out once again to Alan Markham, turning towards the goal, looking for a support player, finding him in Fergal Lynch, challenged strongly. Everybody trying to scramble the ball away. It comes to John Gardner. Falls loose, following it up there is Ronan Curran. Good ball away, down along the sideline. Jerry Quinn tries to take it away from Timmy McCarthy, but McCarthy has it, crossing the 45-metre line. Two in hot pursuit, unable to stop him. McCarthy down, where will it end up? Keen O'Connor was coming through. Brian Corcoran there too as well. Corcoran, O'Connor's after it, and the ball has touched off a defender at last. The man who touched the glass was Brian O'Connell, and that's the game's second 65. I tell you, it's pulsating. It is, Gerard. Just, just watch Timmy McCarthy and he picks it up. That's the first time Timmy, I think, has got in the ball, but he's that type of player. He's, he's dangerous when he gets onto it. Ends up in flicked inside. But, yeah, well, but after Jared, all of that, he went. Uh, Jared, at this stage, I'd say Cork are, go are definitely going to be the happier team. They've weathered the storm. You know, Clare had a brilliant start. Cork have come back into it. And you can see their, their fitness levels. They're huge. They're closing down the Clare attack easier now, and they're creating huge space up and down forward line. And, you know, it, it really looks like a matter of time before Cork get through for a goal at this stage. They're, they're really creating a lot of space up front now. Jerry O'Connor about to take the 65. You've seen his angle. Straight in front of the posts. Again, a white flag. A third for Jerry O'Connor. One from play, one from a free, and one from a 65, which is a, a longer free, I guess. And it's eight points to seven. And Cork will be happy that they will have whatever little breeze there is behind them for the second 35 minutes. They're looking for a score now. Just to draw level, Tony Griffin trying to win his race here. Tom Kenny getting there first. Griffin sticking to the task, doing well. Runs in. Gardner taking up a good position, minding the house. Not the best of balls, however. They try to keep it in play, but all in vain. Last man to touch it was Kieran Murphy. John Allen with the earpiece there because he's got a number of selectors sitting up in the stands. Jar Cunningham's up there. And I notice Fred Sheehy is up there as well. And uh, they're in among there, along with Patsy Morrissey, Joe O'Leary, able to tell John what's happening, what's going right, what's going wrong. Right now it's Jerry Quinn with a fantastic connection all the way down, runs beyond Barry Nugent. Dermot O'Sullivan trying to win his race here with Markham. Reinforcements were arriving, but the challenge on Dermot O'Sullivan wasn't fair, and it hots up, and they need to keep their tempers in check. O'Sullivan was very annoyed by the challenge of Gilligan, the referee having to come in here again, play his Kofi Annan role. Markham initially, and then Gilligan coming in immediately after that. And O'Sullivan will need to be careful. He's already on a on a ticking. Yeah, I don't see any free out for Cork there. I, I just think the Clare forward are challenging for the ball. And it's one thing that creeps into the Cork back line at times. John Gardner and O'Sullivan Pickler, they don't think they should be tackled or anyone can go near them. And it's a little bit of a... A streak that you see coming out of him from time to time. But I still want to be careful, he's ticked already and maybe should already have a yellow card. Don't allow Cusack to take this free. Just inside the 20 metre line. See from the little flags there. Light breeze favouring Clare in the first 27 minutes of this match. Now McCarthy jumping, but it's Dean who takes it down. 
Angle shot across here, intended for Kieran Murphy, got a stick to it. Comes back here to Jerry Quinn. Good covering, but not a good clearance. Straight to Joe Dean, the one man you don't want to give it to. And he avails of the chance and notches his second point of the match. And Cork steal into a two-point lead. 9-7. All as a result of a poor clearance out to Joe Dean from Jerry Quinn, who'd been playing well up to that stage, and Dean unmarked, unchallenged, flawless with his finish. Yeah, and I see Frank Lohan is coming over now to pick him up. Joe Dean has been very influential in the game up now. There's John Gardner with a brilliant take in the half back line. And Jerry O'Grady, here he is across now on Kieran Murphy. That's O'Grady trying to get the ball out, out as far as Tony Griffin, almost running it, running into a lot of traffic. Has lost the stick, so it needs Sean McMahon. To help him out all the way down towards Markham, tussling there. He's done well. Alan Markham got the challenge and dispossessed by O'Halpine. That's a great piece of robbery. Comes back once again, way down the field for Papo Kahi. Joe Dean now, short one, straight as far as Brian Corcoran. Good control. Shooting chance in there for Kean O'Connor. Misses the target. Drifted in there into the space, anticipated. This is the challenge a little while ago here by Sean O'Gohalpine. What about that for a dispossession? Wonderful. Did really well. But only two between them. Davy Fitzgerald. Trying to get Claire going again. They've gone 11 minutes now without a score. Fergal Lynch. Twisting and turning, unable to get the ball in. Stopped by Roman Kern. Wonderful skill. Again, it's Quinn across over there. And the linesman is Dickie Murphy, signalling that it's going to be possession for Cork. Well, as we ex anticipated, Claire came out, and in a welter of anticipation and excitement, they shot into the lead. They're now making a change early in the game for them to make a change. And Derek Quinn is coming in, and it's Fergal Lynch, for whom it didn't work out this afternoon, who's making way. Now, Derek Quinn is a player I know that uh, the team manager, Anthony Daly, has a lot of time for. Really rates this player, gave him plenty of opportunities in the league. We'll have to see how he fares in the championship. Tom Kenny's cut up towards Joe Dean. Into the corner. Frank Lowen trying to get it onto his stick. His brother Brian there on the hands and knees. Has it under pressure, fierce pressure. The All-Ireland champions are not going to relinquish their title here in Munster without a big, big fight. And they lead at this stage by nine points to seven. Five minutes to go to half-time. Claire get it out as far as Tony Griffin. Way down the field, once again it comes. Nugent trying to breeze inside, stopped initially. Again, the challenges are going to come in here on Niall Gilligan. That's Brian Murphy over there, pushed to the ground, and it's a free out. Well, Clare with only one score, you know, in 21 minutes. That's not exactly the kind of form we anticipated. Yeah, John, I, I think what's happened in the last 10 minutes is that the Corkbacks have really got up the championship pace. They're really closing down all the space now. And what they're doing is they're, they're, they're condensing all the play into one end of the field and they're creating loads of space up the other end. And it's classic Cork curling now. And they're really, you know, if Clare aren't careful, Cork could just pull away now before half time. Cork's hurling is quicker as well. A bit sharper at the moment, John. That's a way down the field by Frank Lowen once again. Clare fans wanting something to cheer about. Maybe this is the opportunity. It's the new man in, Derek Quinn. Introduced into the game, Brian Murphy. Trying to get tight on him again. Quinn, hefty challenge. There it's Ronan Curran going back. Facing into the challenge. And the referee noting the foul there of Derek Quinn, who is obviously fired up. But he needs to be cautious as well. And the referee is having a little quiet word with him. Out of shot as we watch that once again. Brian Murphy from Bride Rovers, winded, physio required, game being played at a hectic pace. Yeah, and Jerry Ronan Curran would appear to me to have regained his real top form from 2004, you know, last year there was a few question marks in some games against Waterford, maybe even a lot of pressure on him, he was taken off a couple of times, but really he's back to his very, very best today, he's absolutely dominating the game for centre-back. 
And that is something that Anthony Daly realizes. And he's trying to counter. He's moved Dermot McMahon onto him. Let's see how the changes will develop. This is towards Joe Dean. Coming out to it first time, Frank Lowe, and he's left it behind. Dean trying to get inside. Linking up or trying to link up with uh, McCarthy instead. It's Colin Lynch. That's a bit more like it from Lynch. All the way down. Goalkeeper required. And out comes Domolo Cusack. Running into the challenge there of Alan Markham. And the referee says it's a free in and a charge on the part of Domolo Cusack. Free from the 20-meter line it'll be. No Is great complaint from Domolo. No. That's why he did leave the ground. There wasn't a whole lot in it, but... It was deemed to be charging with the ball when he left the ground. His two feet left the ground. One minute of added time to be played, so we've got about three minutes of action still to go. And Clare, in spite of being outplayed for the last 20 minutes to a large extent and not scoring, will find themselves only a point adrift. The Porrick Quinn there going in to attend to the injured Alan Markham. Niall Gilligan, three points so far, all of them from freeze. This relatively easy for him. Still, it's a pressure shot coming up before the break. He's well equal to that. Four for Gilly. Eight for Clare. And it's nine points to eight. Well, Clare is still in there, Gerbridge. I'd wonder when the pace ups again in the second half. Six of the Cork team have scored from play, only two of the Clare team. So, you know, Cork seem to have more scoring threats right across the field, whereas Clare dependent. Nugent has gone quiet the last few minutes, and Tony Candy has gone quiet as well. So, dependent on freeze from Gilligan. Well, that score in the 34th minute was the first since the 18th minute. They're looking for more now. Sean McMahon out here to Tony Carmody. Got two early on in the game. Didn't see an awful lot of him after that because the half back line of court tightened up, played brilliant hurling. This time, Tony Carmody has spurned the chance. Looks ruefully away. That's a second wide for Clare. Cork leading in the match in the final minute of the 35. There'll be a couple, there'll be a minute to be played after this of stoppage time. Nine points to eight. Goalkeeper. Looking for Dermot, Mac Ma Dermot McCarthy, now McCarthy rather, it's Sean O'Gohalpine. Lowen committed himself, overcommitted himself, Brian Parkour in trying to go in, he's stopped by Brian Lowen, and that's a free in, they can argue as much as they want. But the referee once again making his mind up. And the ball has been brought into a very favourable position. 13 metres nearer to the target, which means across the line here, Hurley's flying. Yeah, but Ger, this, is, this has been a tactic of Clare for years, like they try to intimidate referees. That was definitely a free, they know it's a free, but they use opportunities like this to put the referee under pressure, hoping that later on in the game, maybe a crucial decision will go their way. That's all it is, it's just pure gamesmanship. Barry Kelly is dead right, get away from me, and move the free into the middle. One of our panellists today, he wouldn't have started all of that, would he, by any No, he wouldn't have no, a few no, 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 I don't think so. We'll hear from him very shortly during the halftime break, along with Tomas Mulcahy. Right now it's nine points to eight. Joe Dean with Davy Fitzgerald lining up a five-man defensive wall. Would Dean go for a goal? Would he be happy to tap it over? He's happy to put it over and make it ten points to eight. Joe Dean has put over three points. Three points for Dean, one for Brian Corcoran, no score so far for Kieran Murphy or for Timmy McCarthy or for Keen O'Connor. But Cork leading by two. Yeah, Joe, I think on the balance of play, that's about right, just about right. You know, Clare had a great start, Cork came back into it. So, you know, I think two points at half time is a fair enough indication, but Cork will be the happier team. They'll be the happier, but this game can turn around terribly easily in the second half. The words of wisdom will be important. John Gardner, one of uh, a group of players in that half back line who performed with uh, Trojan efforts in that first half. Barry Nugent, who got off to a flyer and got two points, but Clare were unable to build on it and went a long, long 20 minutes at least without scoring. And at half-time, as the teams go in, there will be uh, a lot to think over. Only two between them at the break. Cork shading it at this stage. And it's Cork 10, Clare 8. And uh, Willa Bohr after the break. Stadium and Thurless, it's half-time in this Monster Hurling Championship clash between Cork and Clare. Cork leading Clare by 10 points. 
2-8. And Tomás Mulcahy, you'd have to be very happy with the way it's gone in that half because Clare started, you know, the usual fire and thunder, but have fizzled out a little bit. Yeah, I mean, most of the championship, Michael, you'd expect that from Clare. I mean, everybody in Cork coming up for this game would have expected Clare to come out of the starting blocks with all guns blazing, and that's what they did, and looked very, very effective. In that first 10-minute period, Barry Nugent, the corner forward, was very, very, very effective, and they were winning a lot of balls all over the field. But two men to me stood out in that first half of Cork, and two guys that were under pressure coming into the game. Uh, the centre-back, Ronan Curran, was taken off in this fixture last year. He's been absolutely very dominant mm -hmm. in that first half period. And the other guy up front has been Joe Dean. Joe has come in for a bit of criticism himself. He was kind of had in the best of years last year by his own standards, but he's been fantastic in that first yeah. half. Ran through for that great save against Davy Fitzgerald, where everything he's done, cut balls over uh, defenders' heads when he shouldn't, for the size yeah, of the man, yeah. he shouldn't be able to do that, you know. But he's laid off tremendous scores, or balls for people to, to get tremendous scores. And that, that has been kind of the linchpin of Cork in the first half, Joe and Ronan Curran. And uh, all over the field, they, they have dominated, maybe come up to half-time. They have, and despite the fact that Clare seem to have gone backwards a little bit in the game, the stats of the game at the same time, Joe, would show that there's, there's not an awful lot in it here, you know? Oh, there's very little in this game. I know Clare made a great start. I mean, six points to two ahead. Now, I suppose what happened after that is a reflection on the way the game has gone. Tony mm. Carmody was completely on top of the start at centre-half forward, scored two great points. Tony Griffin was brilliant at midfield, mm. supplying great ball in. Now, after about 15 minutes then, Ronan Corden got complete control at centre-back. And Jerry O'Connor stormed into the game in the midfield, and of course Tom Kenny with him. And the usual cock formula, the two great midfielders charging forward, we have, they have now come into full pelt in the second half. Yeah, yeah. Now, another thing that has come into the game is Davy Fitz has puck outs once again. <laughs> he was plastered after last year's All Ireland semi final. Yeah. He poked nearly every ball down on top of John Garner. Yeah. Young Fergal Lynch had no hope against him. He, sure. He just cleaned out Fergal Lynch. Now, Fergal Lynch has been taken off. But he was a silly tactic from Clare. They started off very well, shot puck outs. They were doing very well in them, supplying great ball in. But Garner and Corner just cut out everything. Let's have a look at some of those scores from, from early on from Clare because Barry Nugent, uh, Tony Carmody, for example. But that's what Clare would have been looking to, yeah. to sort of come up to it today and, and did in fairness in that first 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, and I mean, uh, Jor is right. I mean, there was a lot of variety in the first half with the purple from David Fitz. A lot of them were coming down the right wing as well, and we didn't see as much as Sean Ogahalpin in that first half period. Correct. Here, see Barry Nugent I mean, picking up an easy ball, and Brian Murphy was shaky for that five or ten minutes, but he's setting down well as well. And here's a breaking ball into Tony Cabri, and again, they were getting long range points. There's a strong breeze down into that end, and they were shooting from long distances, and those were coming off from in that, in that period. But uh, the, the, the puck out, there, there has to be more variety in the puck out. You cannot be pucking the home ball on top of the likes of John Gardner or Ronan Kern off the air. They're going to sweep ball after time. No, you can't. And, and there was a save made by Davy Fitz in that first half as well. That you know, At that stage, Clare uh, were, were flying it on all ends, and Cork would be tight yeah. to save them. Says, Maybe this is not our day when he's pulling off saves like this. I know, this. yeah. I think yeah. they didn't give Cork people most confidence in the former Jordi, you know, as Tomás was saying earlier on. He's really, really sharp today. And Jerry Grady had the better of him last year in the semi final. But he's really Jerry up to stick today. Now, he was breakthrough, Shawnee Lohan. All the great players come to him. The last great player in there, David Fitz blocks it. Now watch, he not, uh, not only saves it, but he gets up yeah. to stop Brian Cockham from shoving it over the line. Now that's a terrific save. I mean, that I mean, is a fantastic save. Yeah, the, I mean, like like the save, and clear, save yeah, and clear. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. initial stop is great, but to get up again and keep his eye on the ball and block it out for 75, only a, uh, 65, only a great, great goalie could do that. But Dean is looking yeah. really dangerous. Corkin is looking very dangerous at full forward. They're dragging Shawnee out. Even though Shawnee has a much better game today than he had the other. But the, one, the, one thing, the one thing we maybe said was a gamble with Keane O'Connor as well, starting yeah. at wing forward. Yeah. Cork half forward line, we're going to be under pressure. But they've done their job. I mean, Jerry Coon, we haven't seen yeah, too much of Jerry Quinn in the game. Yeah, Keane O'Connor is kept getting the ball through and yes. if he does that for another 10 minutes into the second half yeah. he might have his job done and we'll and, see an introduction of a new and player. we've seen those little gaps open as well we've seen fellas like you know uh, uh, Tom Kenny got a point but it wasn't so much the point it was the run that he made uh, you yeah. see a couple uh, of those it, it was the passes there. that led up to the uh, run I think there's yeah. a passage of players yeah. there Michael yeah. Yeah. look at this Ron Corn right yeah. I mean to Jerry O'Connor Hand pass inside, and once he sees the gap, look, he's gone, and it's pace. Now, and look it's at the clear players, three clear players. Well after yeah. And he could have yeah. went even further with this. I mean, yes. he had a man inside, look, shouting Make inside for the ball, I think. Uh, Noel McCarthy waiting for the hand pass inside, but he elected to take his point, and probably the right option at the time. I but think it's, it's always. It's still the old formula from the last two years. You know, the two midfielders breaking forward. But you don't change it. You don't change it. I mean, yeah. it's it. perfect. You know, a lot of people speculation they go to the long game this year, but he has been working for them. He didn't work in the first 20 minutes, they stuck with it and it worked and it really matters. OK, stay with us here on the programme because we have the second half of this match coming up very shortly. Welcome back again to the programme. Cork uh, leading Clare by 10 points to 8. But just a reminder about our nighttime programme at 9.30 tonight and an awful lot to see in that programme. Some very interesting results. Of course, the All-Ireland Champions Tyrone have uh, beaten today by Derry and interesting games as well uh, in Croke Park in the Leicester Football Championship. That's all on tonight's programme plus the report on that Lon London Mayo Connacht Championship match.
you know, not only are Cork in the lead here in this game, but Tomás Mulcahy, we've seen Ben O'Connor warming up in front of the stand as well, just as a little reminder to the Clare fans that he might come in if needed. Yeah, I mean, Jarrah, uh, there's Ben, we see him in, 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 in shot there now, you know, and um, certainly, I mean, the man isn't match fit, uh, isn't match fit, right? I mean, he could be uh, physically fit in, in his own right, but he hasn't played a competitive game mm. since the club baller and final when he played back months, in March. A few minutes out of him, though. Get a couple, well, I think that's the expectation, realistically, yeah. is that they will get 10, 15 minutes out of him. And all the talk was down in Cork over the week when they were picking the selection. If, ja if Ben O'Connor wasn't fit, would they maybe bring Wayne Sherlock into it, put Sean Ogan to yeah. help him, yeah, put, yeah. put Tom Kenny up the wing forward? It's still an option, of course. Yeah. It's still an option, but you're, yeah. I think the, 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 the hard rule in the head for one man no. was that you keep your six backs yes. in place, Correct. you keep your midfield in place, and, and, and you just make one change. change you know? yeah. That's why Kieran O'Connor has gone in there. You know, so And people maybe have asked about other players, like the likes of Neil Rowan and the Kieran Murphys. These guys haven't done enough to justify getting on the team as a starting on the starting 15. This guy, Kieran O'Connor, played cornerback, wing back, has played in challenge matches, he's probably played out of his skin and they felt that this guy deserves to be on the team even if it's at half hour. Clara back out on the, tee, on the field, so there hasn't too much talk in the dressing room. No, I, I wouldn't suppose. say there's too much talk. I'd say now they have the team on it. I thought they were planning to start, but they're yeah. even in the corner. Niall Gilligan out the field. Gilligan has got nothing inside in the corner for Pelham Mulcahy. Best chance is to move him out because unless he's involved in the game, he loses concentration. Mm. He's a way better out there now and especially we should remember that Clare are playing against yes. the wind yes, in the yes, second half yes. and it's a fairly yes. strong wind now. Yeah, it's I mean, there's so one worry that I would have maybe for Cork was the one man that was struggling a bit to me was the fullback in the first half. Yeah. And certainly against the wind with Markham, with his pace, if they're inclined to drop the ball yeah, in front of yeah, him, yeah. he's been put in there for one reason, that's to get a goal as well. Yeah. You know? so, I mean, they'll need to tighten up a bit more in that I think back line. The vital thing here will be who will score a goal. This is very difficult to score goals in Clare and Cork. A long history of very few uh, score goals. This scored. man here won't be into his <laughs> yeah, goal. I know. I, well, I'll tell you, he's going to best that he won't. Second half, about to start, let's go back into Michael and to Ger. The wind, just to confirm, has stiffened a little and it is supporting Cork for the second 35 minutes. So everything ready. Second half gets underway, two between them. And straight away, Clare tried to make a positive start to the second half. All carried out over the sideline by Alan Markham. Nobody in any particular hurry to come and take the line ball. Little consultation among a couple of the Cork players. It's going to be Jerry O'Connor who will take it. After a really memorable 2005, wondering what's ahead in uh, 2006. Did well down as far as Niall McCarthy. That's Kieran Murphy. Leaving it behind this time to Jerry O'Grady, who switched across for about five minutes from the end of the first half. Gary Quinn beaten. Pressure back down on Brian Lohan. Brian Corcoran's trying to steal a march. Good control that time by Corcoran. That's a lovely score. The second of the game. His touch was in beautifully there. Two from two for Brian Corcoran. And Cork open up a three point advantage. Yeah, Jerry, that's what's made him such a great asset to this team since he came back. You know, he's nearly impossible to get, get away from. Um, he's there, he's playing like a back. Uh, up in the forwards, but he's also very accurate and a super scorer. Ever. Well, had he retired a few years ago, he'd have finished with one All Ireland success from 1999. Now he has three, and uh, Ronan Curran has a free against him. Free to Clare from just inside the 65 meter line. Ronan Curran was shown the notebook, so warned for that. This free to be taken by Sean McMahon. Always good for a couple of points from the long-range freeze 85 points in all so far today playing his 46th championship match this is important they don't want to fall too far in arrears nicely judged oh no it's not it's not it's outside the cheers you're hearing are court cheers a miss by Shawnee McMahon Gilligan was in very quickly just to make sure that Donald O'Cusack didn't uh, try and play a short one out to Pat Mulcahy. Huge one all the way down. Travels in as far as Brian Corcoran. Kid O'Connor trying to make some headway there. Stopped by Jerry O'Grady. Clear work it out as far as Tony Griffin. Blocked down here by John Gardner. Brushing aside the challenges. Gardner once again, licking up with Tom Kenny. Players calling for it. 
trying to be precise with the pass, succeeding as well. And that is now McCarthy tripped, and it's going to be a free in. Lovely angle pass that time by Tom Kenny to pick out Niall McCarthy. There were a couple of players down on that side. Through the foul. So ticking there for Jerry O'Grady from Crusheen. David Fitzgerald making sure the defence is organised. Joe Dean will take three points from the first half. Stretch Cork's lead. Jodine succeeds. A fourth. Three of the four, I think, coming from freeze. One from play. Four shots at the target, however, for the man from Killer. 12 points to eight. Asking questions now of Claire. They've got to get some momentum going again if they're capable. This is Dermot McMahon. Angling this one across here towards Gary Quinn. First half substitute for the Steeler March and Pat Balcahi. Across into the centre. And he really telegraphed his intentions to Roland Curran, who's able to sweep away past Tony Carmody. Trying to spoon it outside here for Niall McCarthy to get onto. Letting fly from distance all the way in. Goalkeeper securely takes clearance under pressure by David Fitzgerald. Back from where it came, however, and the referee saw the challenge there on Niall McCarthy. And it's an unfair one at that. It'll be a free to Cork. Still arguing the toss. Tony Carmody still with his point of view, but the one that counts is that of the referee, Barry Kelly. Yeah, and they clearly took down, but no need for the Shawnee Mack was under the ball, it's a silly free to give away. And Jerry, even though there's a half an hour to go, you just feel the Cork will just begin to creep away, and if Clare don't get a score or two shortly, you know that this game is going to be gone out of your reach with still maybe 25 minutes to go. Well, Joe was, Joe was the free taker, of course, until Ben O'Connor came on the scene, showing his up to it and up to everything. Joe Dean with another. Four frees taken, four frees successfully converted, and Cork lead by five. Clare trying to work on this puck out here. Colin Lynch trying to win it back, stolen away from him by Tom Kenny. Clare with only two scores in the last 20 minutes of this match. It's all the way down towards Brian Crawford again. Having the better of his tussle with Brian Lowen. Pressure on Jerry O'Grady now. Stepping inside the 13-meter line to clear. Gilligan coming out the field. Now McCarthy. Dispossessed by Gilligan. Good ball across here towards Barry Nugent. Looked impressive in the opening five, six minutes. This time it's blocked down by Brian Murphy, who's got the measure of the man from Ella O. Joe Dean feeding it ahead to Niall McCarthy. Trying to win the challenge here against Shawnee McMahon. Hand passed outside to Jerry O'Connor. Unmarked. Target practice. Over the bar. Another for four. And another for Jerry O'Connor. He's hit over his fourth. And another four shots from him on target with a 100% return here. Great pass across to him, but there was no marking. Yeah, and Jared, Clare are looking very ragged. They are, Jared, looking at Colin Lynch. He's absolutely out this field. One of the great midfielders over the last 10 years. But he just can't keep up with Tom Kenny and Jerry O'Connor. And he's getting no support from the younger players around him. And really, Clare look, not really struggling for inspiration and for leadership. And they can't keep looking to Shawnee McMahon and Brian Lowe and Colin Lynch. The other players have to step up to the mark. But they're not just doing it again today. It's Brian Corcoran who is down injured, causing the concern. Dr. Con Murphy there with his back to us. Want to get the full forward back into action quickly. Jonathan Clancy is being prepared to come into the game for Clare, number 17. And the player is going to go off as Barry Nugent. Well, it was cock a hoop in the opening five, six minutes, but it hasn't worked for him since then. And this is a player they were really hoping would produce something special. So Nugent comes off. 
And Jonathan Clancy comes in. Clancy from Clare Castle. Tuck out. Once again, Cork mopping it up in midfield. Tom Kenny racing away from all rugby challengers. Oh, another great ball. Jerry O'Connor trying to make something of it. Well, it was a hopeless situation, and in the end, Cork win a line ball. Yeah, Jonathan Clancy's come on there now, and he's obviously got to play out the field. He's, that was him there back around his own half back then. So Brian Murphy's just staying back around 50 yards for his own goals. And, you know, I don't know if that tactic is going to work when you're, when you're six points down against that Iron Champions League that he can need to be playing man on man. And so Halpine. Brilliantly in, picked up here by Brian, by Kieran Murphy, Joe Dean, shouldered, Dean again, taking it away from his man, pressurised by Jerry O'Grady, they work it back towards Niall McCarthy, fierce tussles there near the sideline, Kieran Murphy again stepping in, the referee's going to throw the ball up to end all that uncertainty, six points the margin. They're having a ferocious battle on their hand to get back into this game. Timmy McCarthy trying to win it. It's taken from him by his own man, by Niall McCarthy. Stepped out over the line. Line ball. This time a line ball to Clare. <laughs> well, he's battling. The man from Carrick too for every ball that comes his way, as you'd expect. What can Brian Lowell and the rest of the Clare team? Loads of experience. For the last number of years, we've been wondering how long will they keep on going? They try to reproduce it year after year, which is never easy. Nine ball for the banner men here. Jerry O'Grady from Crusheen. Decent connection. They look for it. It's Sean McMahon who takes it away. They need inspiration from somewhere. Who's going to produce it? Instead, it's Kieran Murphy. Outside for Tom Kenny for Cork. 45 metres out. The hands are in the air. The ball's in the air. More significantly, it's between the posts and over. 15 points to eight. Another for Tom Kenny. That's two for the day. After Shawnee McMahon was hooped here by O'Halpine, it came eventually to Tom Kenny. And a wonderful shot straight through the posts. and our Clare might edge in front by maybe two or three. Yeah, I thought it'd be a very intense match and the Clare maybe would edge it in a tight finish, but you know, the danger was once Cork would get on top with their fitness levels and with this running game, you know, the Clare would be able to deliver it. And the, the, the midfield is the best, best example. Jerry O'Connor and Tom Kenny have the freedom of hurlers. They actually look like there's nobody marking. They've scored four points from play already between them. Well, they've been the best midfield pairing for the last number of years and that's taken again by Ronan Curran. Down towards Timmy McCarthy trying to win some ball here. Kieran Murphy nipping in. They scramble for it. Tony Griffin trying to take it up. Murphy trying to take it through on his own. Stopped that time brilliantly by Brian O'Connell. And the referee again noting a foul, and it's going to be a free once more to Cork. Foul by Colin Lynch. Frustrating afternoon for the man from Lissy Casey. Not happy with the referee, that's for sure. Here we are. Take by Ronan Curran. Everything is going well, apart from there being a place in the Monster Final, which is a huge prize. There is also the matter of automatic inclusion in the quarterfinals of this year's championship. Jodine to strike. He's got five so far. This is outside the 65 meter line. Breeze behind him. Everything going sweetly. And that's over the bar. Cork lead by double scores. They have majority support here as well, it seems, in Thurlis this afternoon. Jonathan Clancy firing that one in. They're needing something special. They've got a free. They need a goal, really. David Fitz, David O'Sullivan is uh, annoyed with that. Big man going back to mind the goal line. This is what happened. Contesting here with Markham, and Markham dragged down, not for the first time by O'Sullivan, who's on a ticking. 
but he's been on a ticking it seems since about half past three this evening <laughs> he has worked. I think the problem there was it, was it was obviously a free but the whistle was very late and being blown and caused a bit of confusion there among the park back then anyway he's back there along with another clawing man Donald Oak will Gilligan go for a goal here it's a bit outside the 20 meter line and they take the score just the first score he's happy to half. put it over it's Clare's first point as you say in the second half and that has taken 13 minutes to produce five for Niall Gilligan all of them coming from freeze but they need scores from the likes of Dermot McMahon, Alan Markham and some of the others as well in particular the new man who came in, Derry Quinn yeah and Ger, just one thing in general the two men I think that struggled the big names last in the car team were Ronan Corn and Niall McCarthy their enthusiasm didn't seem to be the same as the year before but are they back to their best today both really full of life full of enthusiasm for the game and Corn in particular is having a huge game there, get it back. First of all, through Brian Lowe, and then up down the field. Brian Murphy, as Quinn fell, drives it away down, and Brian Lowe once again comes across here on the lush pastures of Semple Stadium, which is in wonderful condition. Oof, an awkward hand pass. O'Connell trying to keep it in, closed down. Needs Colin Lynch, and Lynch takes it out, showing tenacity. Gets it away there to the substitute, Jonathan Clancy. Spills back out again from the Cork half-back line. Under pressure once again with Carmody here. Trying to take it into a scoring situation. Pursued by two, three Cork players. Straight outside here for Niall Gilligan. Looking for another score. And Gilligan from an awkward angle has put it wide. Four wides for Clare. They could have done with that. Injured player Tony Carmody. He made all the running there just moments early before laying off the ball for Niall Gilligan. Once again, the team doctor required. Paulick Quinn doing the running repairs, hoping to have Carmody back in. He was the leading scorer for Clare during the league. Two points in this match, but they both came so early. Clare made a dream start. Six points to two up. But uh, they've been falling into arrears from the time that Cork drew level midway through the first half. Fuck out towards Dean once again. Drop down there. McMahon trying to get the ball away for Clare. Needing some assistance. Frank Lowen outside here as far as Colin Lynch. Plenty of time to go. It's two against one for Clare here. And the one man is right. It's Markham with the dodge. Markham with the shot. Markham with the point. Good score. That's a bit more like it. That will rekindle expectations up there in the Kalinan end. There's an injured player here, and it's Joe Dean. 16-10. Clare not giving up on it yet. We're only in the 50th minute in a 70-minute game. Plenty of time left. But that was a good score by Alan Markham. He was left there, one against two, got out ahead of Pat Mulcahy. Got over him, fired it in, the angle shot rising up and over. Yeah, and in fairness for John Clancy has come into the sub, he's gone out around the middle of the field, sweeping behind the half-back and he's picked up a few good balls in that position and played him into the full forward there. There'll be another change for Clare as we watch Dean get the attention. Injured nose, that's Declan O'Rourke's coming on. He's going to come on to replace Dermot McMahon. Well, we've now seen the replacement of players like McMahon and Fergal Lynch, big, strong fellows. And O'Rourke has gone in to play full forward. That's a change. He's gone in on Dermot O'Sullivan. Meanwhile, out the field. There's still attention and concern about Joe Dean. Alan Markham has gone out to the 40. John Allen will have noted that. Trying to restrict the movement of Ronan Curran. Curran dominating. John Allen there having words with Jer Cunningham, one of the selectors. There's going to be a change. And coming into the game will be Neil Ronan. If it's Joe Dean, forced out, at least he's out as a temporary sub at this stage anyway. We'll have to see as a permanent later on. Here it comes straight to Roland. Everybody else has been doing it. Why not Roland? I'd say about 10 seconds after coming on, he's fired it over the bar. First point in this year's championship for the man from Bally Hay. Yeah, he was just in the right place at the right time. Just coming out of the field there. Simple ball thrown out to him and over the bar. Colin Lynch in. Clare challenging. Derek Quinn trying to make life, off, life awkward as Pat Mulcahy emerges. Referee says play on. He does. Gets it out to Tom Kenny. Just overhitting the ball. 
No way as far from the midfield, Jerry O'Connor could take it. Ryan Bolter Clare, who were in a hurry. They may have plenty of time, but they're seven points behind. The line ball will be hit by Jerry Quinn. Quinn playing in his 22nd championship match inside to mark him. First touch wasn't good enough, and then Ronan Curran comes in on top of the referee says, play away, they do. Gilligan has it, taking it by Michael Kangia for Griffin. He's just unable to get it away because Brian Murphy sweeps it downfield. Keir O'Connor trying to dispossess Jonathan Clancy. Bit more fire once again now being illustrated by Clare. Cork standing firm. And Brian Murphy and uh, Jerry O'Connor this time, the one who was back there to help out. And O'Connor, the one who was fouled, free from 20 metres out. Nice sidestep. Need to have, needed to have his wits about him that time. And the referee is in there, just supervising what's going on. Derek Quinn, I think, a new player onto the Clare team today. You know, looks a lovely, skillful player, but I think he's like a lot of lads will find out. He's finding out today when you come to Championship Hurling, there's that he got three or four balls in the first half, hooked every time. You know, you don't get that same space you get in Club Hurling, and you really know you have to sharpen up your game that little extra step again. And he's a player, I think, for the future, but it's a big experience for him today. But he's really struggling with the pace of the game. So, still concern for Joe Dean, the nose was in the front of him. Meanwhile, free to Cork. Dumont O'Sullivan ready to take. And the Clare fans feeling his time wasting. He's in no great hurry. Huge one. All the way down. Cork trying to hold on to it. Kieran Murphy trying to make inroads. It's Brian Lowen instead from the Wolf Jones Club in Shannon. Way down. Oh, Halpine contesting. Good stick work there to get it to Tom Kenny missed by Frank Lowen and here comes Neil Ronan once again opportunity to really shine from limited opportunities and that's wide one from two he'll have to be content with at this stage that awful phrase the impact salvi was certainly that last year yeah, and a fine player in his own right, you know, but I suppose at this stage he has proven that, you know, he's more beneficial to him coming on to stuff, and that's the way he's going to be used this year as well. Sean go Halbeen getting it back as far as Pat Mulcahy, little block on it, but it runs on towards Timmy McCarthy, dodging around Tony Griffin. Colin Lynch is after, but he can't keep up with him. And this time there's a trip by Sean McMahon, it's going to be a free in. Free to Cork. Referee having a quick word with Shawnee McMahon. Could be a card, and there is. Yellow for Shawnee McMahon. Uh, I think Cork will be very happy with low-key performances from some of the forwards. Left. They're working very, very, very hard. Timmy McCarthy, Kieran Murphy, they're not getting a lot of scores, Keane O'Connor. There's Tomas Lowe half time. They're, they're on the ball an awful lot. And they're stopping the event. Jerry Quinn has never had a quieter game for Clare than today because Timmy McCarthy is imposing them physically. Jodine is back. Almost the biggest cheer of the afternoon when he came back. Well, Clare had come here with so many people saying they were going to be the team that were going to knock Cork out of the championship. After 56 minutes, they could find themselves eight points behind. Dean the taker, Dean the scorer. Yeah, Ger, and I think a lot of, I think an awful lot of neutral observers and maybe Kilkenny and Tiff and everyone else are going to be saying today Cork look really, really sharp. They're hurling their first touch is as good as it has been any time over the last few years. Long way to go in this year's championship, but there's a place right now in the Munster final at stake. One of the biggest days on the GAA calendar as Derek Quinn tries to get inside. Stopped by Pat Mulcahy, team captain. Back to Dermot O'Sullivan, huge clearance. All of his clearances have been immense. Way down the field. McMahon rises up, would have caught that in the past. Jerry Quinn helps out this time. Good leap in the air, once again by Markham. Getting there ahead of Mulcahy. Good control by Tony Carmody. Has Colin Lynch just ahead of him? Oh, he's hooked. Jerry O'Connell was coming in behind him, did the need fall, helped out by Pat Mulcahy, and Cork are now playing as they will. Complete masters. Clare will try to unsettle them. There's still time to go here. We're running in the 22nd minute. 
the second half. Jerry O'Connor stepping away from Markham's would be challenge. Griffin still chasing around. Here's Ronan Curran. Back into the Clare defence once again. Jerry O'Grady now. Picking out Clancy. Curran under it. Misses. Gilligan's after it. Has players there to help, but the referee didn't allow an advantage. Only a couple of cork backs to get by had he got into the clear. But the referee didn't allow him any opportunity. Shame there isn't a rule whereby the player could go on and if nothing comes of it, he can, the free could be awarded exactly, immediately yeah, after it. Exactly, it be very, very frustrating at times. That's a yellow card for Pat Balcahi, so a yellow card per team. Gilligan ready to strike. Up and over. So we're back to a seven-point game once again, 18 points to 11. Still neither goalkeeper beaten. The bookies who were putting up the odds, well, they knew what they were on about, didn't they? 8-1, I think I had a few quid in the Had you really? <laughs> you don't do that, do you? Yeah, I do. Beautiful take this time by Timmy McCarthy. Touching a good one. Lowen getting there first. Hits softly, but he gets it up as far as Colin Lynch. Just enough on it. Driven in, and it's Curran again. What a match he's playing for a man who really was below his best and his confidence suffered last year. He's been immense in this contest. Huge one in, Murphy's after it. Doesn't really threaten Davy Fitzgerald, however. Brian Corker seems to be carrying an injury now at this stage. I'd be very surprised if Cork don't take him out. He's limping badly inside the full forward. A couple of changes here. Patrick Donnellan is one of those coming on. The other is Dohi O'Connell, brother of Brian. So they have thrown everything they have got at Cork at this stage just to see if they can turn things around. Well, Jerry Quinn, one of those to go off. Cork are also thinking about bringing back in Neil Ronan. So switches, changes, Gilligan's still there. Brought down. It's Shonago Halpine. Back. Beautifully back by John Gardner. When things were rough, John Gardner stood up and faced the music in the first half when Clare were attempting to uh, achieve mastery. Uh, Brian Corcoran is uh, going to make way listen to the roar of approval from the fans. Neil Rowland comes in, I think Brian Corcoran has to be one of the most popular sports players, sports people ever, produced by the Southern Capital. Yeah, what a player, Jerry, he did it again today. You know, when the game was in the melting pot, he overshadowed Brian Lowen today, and Brian Lowen overshadowed him last year, and Corcoran would be a proud, he'd be a very, very proud hurler, and he wasn't, it wasn't going to happen during two days in a row. Claire have now used all five subs, Tom Kenny, Letting it in. Saved from going wide by Joe Dean. Trying to make a better angle for himself. He's on fire. This man can do no wrong. Eight points for Dean. You know, he had an option there when he took the ball and won it at the end line of playing it back to Tom Kenny. But he just made an angle and floated it over. 19 points to 11. Clancy under pressure. Halpine trying to get the ball away comes off a cork player off Keen O'Connor I think the last one to touch it yeah Joe I think Joe Dean has suffered a bit in the cork setup over the last couple of years the way they're playing the running game they haven't been using them but today he's been more in the play Ben O'Connor's not there he's been receiving more ball first time ball into his corner and he's been absolutely majestic his first touch unbelievable and he's won every ball that's come his way once again Claire trying to win the ball back there was Declan O'Rourke trying to get the ball in. Who does he hit it to? The only court man he can find, Pat Mulcahy, unchallenged. Way down the field again. Well blocked again. Well, the corner forwards are playing like corner backs, getting in the blocks and the hoops for court. First ten minutes may have belonged to Clare, but the rest of this game has belonged to the reigning All-Ireland champions. Is there a response yet? Jonathan Clancy, big one in there towards O'Rourke. Played back towards Tony Carmody. And he's found it. 
Handling the range brilliantly there, Tony Carmody. But just his three, third point. They need a lot more, and the fans know it. 19, 12 behind. Brian Corcoran just receiving some attention. And Clare fans have said, look, uh, this isn't going to be our day. It'll be the qualifiers, I think they feel. Players must believe that they can still keep going and somehow find a miracle from somewhere. Neil Ronan. Almost exhibition stuff. Nice ball in. Initially it was anyway towards Timmy McCarthy. Lost his footing. Jerry O'Grady got it away. That's Gilligan back there. They've just run into a bang in form court team. That shot by Dohi O'Connell there, rewarded. First point since coming on as a substitute, and it's 12 for 19 points to 13. O'Connell's score, playing at top of the left. Ben O'Connor is about to come in as a replacement for Kieran Murphy. And you can see the way he's running on. It's not at full pace by any means. But he's in to sample the atmosphere and receive the acclaim of the crowd. Lowen reaching for this one. Six minutes to go, a little under. This is Frank Lowen. Out it comes towards Tony Griffin. Jonathan Clancy. Tony Carmody. Swinging it around towards Markham, overhitting it, out over the sideline. Brian Ball. Markham and Ronan Curran, they're just explaining our uh, exchanging a word or two. Doesn't look like it was terribly complimentary. Line ball anyway. You'd wonder about the wisdom, Jerry, bringing in maybe Ben O'Connor on a day like that, but I suppose what the, they're trying to get him up to match fitness. He's, he hasn't really hurled any competitive hurling, so maybe ease him in for 20 minutes today and try to have him right for a monster final. Well, we got a glance there, we're looking at John Allen, we got a glance of Anthony Daly, I wonder what he does now into the qualifiers, it seems. Yeah, it's, and it's going to be very, very difficult, you know, with, you know, to, to try to get the, the Brian Law and the Sean McMahons fired up again for another long campaign through the qualifiers, it's going to be very, very difficult to play now. That was an amazing sideline ball. It stayed in about an inch from the line. And the referee stepping in to adjudicate. Line ball to Clare. You know, they bowl a lot in Cork, and it's road bowling, they throw the ball. If they hit it as direct as that, they'd be pretty happy, I think. That's on Halteen. Back out to John Gardner. Looking for Joe Dean. Frank Lowen comes out, everybody misses it. Helping out is Shawnee McMahon inside his own 45 metre line. His team six points behind. But Clare come looking, and now Gilligan. Trying to get inside, still playing with great heart and determination, ball handle on the ground, three out to court. You know, Clare battle in the way, Joe, but really the biggest difference is the athleticism, the fitness of the court team and the ability to carry the ball and just, you know, especially Tom Kenny and Jerry O'Connor, they've covered every blade of grass, Ronan Corn, Gardner and O'Halpin have dominated after the first 10 or 15 minutes. You, but you see, when people looked at the court team, they said so many of them are here still from 1999, from Jimmy Barry Murphy's day, they forget that some of the Clare players are there from well before that. From 95, you know, 94, 95, even earlier, in yeah. the early 90s with, with Davy Fitz and Brian Lohan, so it's a long, long road, but Cork really have maintained their sharpness of fitness, a tribute to John Allen's management. Is there a goal in here. this? Whoa. That was a fair effort. That was a fair effort, certainly. Neil Ronan. Maybe a little altercation with Joe Dean. <laughs> Joe Dean and uh, Davy Fitz. I think Joe Dean tried to stop Davy taking a quick puck out, which mightn't be the best idea he'd have at this stage of the game. Yeah. Davy had the satisfaction of making, making one wonderful save from Joe Dean. That was that effort a little while ago from Neil Ronan. sideline once again, Clare's game has just gone ragged, gone to pot really, and David Fitzgerald has a broad <laughs> smile on his face now, what a goalkeeper he is, one of the best I've ever seen. 
This is what happened a little while ago. Jody wanted to take the fuck out. No way. You ain't doing that, man. But they're getting in the nose, another belt in the nose there very easily from Davy. That's come out to Brian O'Connell. Looking for another one, goalkeeper and cornerback there. It's the team captain, Tat Mulcahy, with uh, a broken stick, gets the ball away. Seized on again here by Brian O'Connell. Bounces awkwardly there for a walk. Comes away here through Gardner. John Gardner looking for Dean again. Great match he's playing. The angle shot. What a sensational display by Joe Dean. Nine points. It was Owen Kelly here a couple of weeks ago with 14 for tip. Nine today out of ten shots for Joe Dean. Nobody able to stop him. You know, the only thing that he has missed is that wonderful save by Donalo Kikusak. There's a yellow card there for Brian Lohan. Sheer frustration, I think, at this stage for him. A minute to go on the 70. Cork ahead by seven. Tom Kenny. Well, there's not much point in oh, sitting overheated at this stage. Sitting over the clear, lad. You know, just want to accept it now, move on, and try to regroup for the next few weeks. Two minutes of added time with the glade. And he's got a bit of restructuring to do. Hard to know exactly what kind of changes he will make as we look further ahead to the championship. A lot of great players out there. Markham is one of them. That stopped. It came bouncing off the ground, right up into the arms of Jimmy O'Sullivan. And here's Brian Murphy. Huge one. Oh, trying to pick out Dean with a precision ball. Cut out, however, by Frank Lowen. Good vigilance by Lowen. Good blocking. Comes out to McMahon this time. The little hand pass outside. Fed ahead by Clancy. Held on there somehow by Brian O'Connell. How they'd love to get a goal, just something to console themselves ever so slightly. Jonathan Clancy and that ball rising up and over the bar. Good strike by Clancy on his championship debut. And he's doing the stoppage time. Jonathan Clancy's done well playing out the field. He's let Pat Mulcahy loose inside. And it's, it's a bit like um, a few years ago, Johnny Crowley in our own final just stood back there and picked up ball and cleared him out the field. Cork uh, were ready to strike. Just to look at the scoring chances as we're into the stoppage time. Cork created 30 chances. Clare created 20 chances. As you can see, Cork took 20 of their 30. And Jerry, I think this is this is where John Allen is so tactically astute as a manager. The game is over. He just still takes off Pat Mulcahy and brings on Wayne Sherlock just to keep him on his toes. He did the same last year with Corn and with Niall McCarthy in crucial matches. And he's very, very astute in that respect. And Obviously, both of them are fighting for the one position. Sherlock is in brilliant form. He's basically saying to Mulcahy, keep on your toes, or when Sherlock is in for you. Yeah, you're right. Brian Lowen out there to challenge. Spills away here, once again to Jerry Quinn. One more minute of stoppage time to be played. Brian O'Connell. They battled with the reigning All-Ireland champions. They're six points behind. They'll be heading for the qualifiers with the likes of Limerick and a few more as well. David O'Sullivan can't hold it. It spills. Gardner there, secure as ever. Quick look up, nobody challenging. I'm sure Anthony Daly is probably thinking it's back to the drawing board. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult. He brought on a couple of players there, took them off again. How is he going to motivate these guys over the next month, you know? And the older players, the heads are going to be down as well. So it's really going to be a tough summer ahead for Clare. That's why this game was so important today. Um, and that's why Cork are going to be so happy. They're just going to march on now to a Munster final. And they're going to be very difficult to beat based on today's form. You often wonder what happens to the guy who invented the drawing board when he has a bad day. You know, this anyway. wrong. All our predictions go out the window. I think a lot of us got it wrong today. Sure does. We thought Clare would be, you know, maybe really might come, come through in this day, but they've been completely outclassed, really. That's O'Connell hits straight there at Brian Murphy. Sean O'Halpin has the ball. Cork have this match. Barry Kelly blows, and the reigning All Ireland champions and the Munster champions are safely over the first hurdle. Clare gave them everything they possibly had in a whirlwind start, and they led by six points to two, but after that, 
Cork took over, took over all over the field. Joe Dean finishes with nine points out of ten shots at the target. An amazing display, foiled once, but a wonderful save by David Fitzgerald. The people like Brian O'Connell and all the rest, they have to now look ahead to the qualifiers into a group of four. Only two will make its way out of that group. Two groups, of course. But people like Jerry O'Connor and Ben O'Connor, well, for them it's a happy day. They're through to the Munster final. They're also guaranteed a place in the quarterfinals. And they're the first time to be in that situation. Following victory here in Semple Stadium, it's Cork 20 points, Clare 14. Let's get some comment and let's go down to Tony O'Donoghue. Thanks very much indeed, Jer. John Allen, the Cork manager, joins me. John, you have to be pleased with that display. Absolutely. Um, you know, after after five or seven minutes, you would have said, you know, we were in trouble and the intensity and the ferocity that Clare had, we were near the match. Uh, we came back into the game, um, went in two points up at half time. We played really well. I must say, I was, I was very pleased overall. You're still able to find the gears and get up that, that extra level that you need. Well, our, our you know our backs were superb today, and our half back line, you know, Ronan Corden had a magnificent game. Uh, we just got up the gears. We ran at them. Um, I was very pleased because it was a big game for both teams, and you know, it kind of it kind of um, you know reinforces that 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 we are well the better team, and you know, twice in a row. But, which, which I'm happy about, Tony. We won't talk about the other thing, we'll talk about the strength of your bench, because people said you hadn't changed the team much, you named an unchanged team. Ben O'Connor didn't make it, but he made a cameo appearance. Neil Ronan did well for you. Wayne Sherlock even came on in the end. He did, yeah. Well, you know, I, I said during the week there that I think we have a stronger bench this year than we had last year. Uh, ben O'Connor, two weeks ago, hadn't the chance of playing, came on today. We didn't need to use him earlier, which is great. Uh, we have 28 fellas fighting for 15 places, and, you know, that's that's the way to have it. Even your captain here, Pat Mulcahy, had to make way. Pat, congratulations on a, a good game for Cork, and your first victory as captain in the championship. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was interesting enough. Um, it's great to go out the first day, first day of the championship. But uh, it's just nice to win the first game this time of year, you know? We were just talking about the bench there, though. You came off, Wayne Sherlock came on. It's going to keep you and your toes and every player in the starting yeah. 15. Yeah, in fairness, there's fierce competition in, all over the team. And any time you play for Cork, there's a guy sitting on the bench. Every bit as good as the fellas out in the field to come on, you know? So we always know that. That's, that comes to playing for Cork, you know? Um, did Flair surprise you with the intensity of their start? We expected that. You know, maybe the conditions weren't as good as they were. Last, last August, September in Cork Park, you know, the weather has been too good the last couple of weeks. So, you know, it didn't, maybe, the game itself wasn't as good as it was last year, but um, it's just nice to come out with a win. And into the Munster final again? Yeah, another Munster final. Fingers crossed. Yeah, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Back to you, Michael. Yeah, nice to come out with a win, all right, and what a win that was for the All-Ireland Champions. Gerlach Nan, Tomás Mackay here with me in the studio, but Tomás, that was very impressive stuff. I mean, all the talk ads before the game and the build-up to this and the speculation and so on, but there's nothing like going out in the field and showing just exactly what you're worth, I suppose. Well, as, um, I had said at the start, Michael, that like, Cork had probably the more skillful hurlers, and I proved there today. I mean, this Cork team and Cork hurlers in the past, they just love coming to Turles, I mean, to, 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 to display the skills that they have, and uh, certainly I think skill went out in the day. I mean, you could talk about physical fitness, and oh, yeah. Joe will agree with me yeah. here on this, I'm sure, like that. You train as hard as any other team, I'm sure. Clear, Cork trained as hard as Clare, Clare trained as... But at the end of the day, I think just hurling skill won out today. today. Speaking of hurling skills, is there anybody in the team at the moment like Joe Dean? He's down there with Tony. Yes, I'm joined by one of the smallest men on the field, but today he contributed nine points. Joe Dean, a magnificent display. Well done. Thanks, Tony. You know, I suppose we're just relieved to get off to the get off to win the start of the year. You know, the easiest way to win an Ireland title is, is to go straight through the front door and play as little games as possible. So, thankfully, we got that. We got what we came up for today. How do you feel your own form this year? You seemed really sharp today. Well, I suppose uh, up and down. You know, um, the last couple of weeks it was disappointed me on form, but um, thankfully we all worked out for the day. We played a couple of challenge games. Things didn't go great, but it's, ni it's nice that it comes to a good day. You could have scored a magnificent goal as well but for a brilliant save by David Fitzgerald yeah and first it was a super save you know um, I caught it reasonably well it was in the top corner and, and uh, David Joy full length made a fantastic save in fairness to him I thought it was in but look that's, that's the joys of it and Cork in the Munster final again yeah you know they're great days you know Munster, Munster final days are very, very special you know it's going to be against a tip now or Waterford so we're just looking forward to that okay thanks very much indeed for joining us Joe 
Sherlock, now, there was a couple of moments in the second half, I suppose, that really defined this Cork team, defined the match, I suppose, in a way. We're looking at a Tom Kenny point, but the point about this one, I suppose, was the, the, the block that Sean Ogo had been put in to begin with, and it was just, you know, it, it kind of summed up the day, maybe. Yeah, the work rate of Cork today, and it was work rate at their ease. You know, we were all talking about the great intensity Clare had been to the game. It reminded me of Clare when I was playing. We'd burst out for 20 yeah. minutes, yeah. and then if the other team came back at us, it, it would fall completely yeah. flat. Yeah. This had happened today. I know that was a long time ago. Now, what, <laughs> what's this? Passage of play here. You know, Cork completely in command, passing the ball around to each other. Tom Kinney, who was absolutely brilliant yeah, today. Yeah. What a, I mean, th those two midfielders are the two best forwards Cork have as well. Yeah, yeah. But I think the huge thing today was the performance of Jordi. You mm. know, that will give Cork more satisfaction than beating Clare, than the yeah. performance that I think he has. Because he has gone through two years, two slack years for him. Yeah. He was back today like he was in 1999. The, the, the kind of sharpness that he brought here to Tullis on his very first day against Clare in the Munster final. Really sharp, skillful, a delight to watch. He, both sides, left and right, from the sideline off beyond the, the, the fast end, right here in front of us here. It didn't matter where he came, he was able to score. The scores that we picked out by him, I mean, it's not just the sharpness at all. That no. When a player looks casual in the middle of a Munster Hurling Championship match, it just tells you everything, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, does nobody ever question Joe's Hurling ability? Maybe at times said maybe he wasn't as fit as he should have been. And I know personally myself that he works so much in the game. Here is a ball that was going wide, yeah. or looked to be going wide, and Frank Long was ever out to go wide. I mean, Joe, this is a great touch Look for me. That. Just to take it out to the 14-yard line and throw, throw it over the bar. But he so, works so hard on his own physical fitness. And I think Michael alluded to it in, the, in his commentary as well. Not having Ben O'Connor on the team today and Jerry O'Connor and Tom Kenny striking from long distance and Ben O'Connor, there was much more ball going into the it inside was, line. Yeah. And it was a tactic Cork used a lot more today yeah. than they have in the last couple of years. He was more yeah. peripheral yeah. kind of player yeah. almost. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. ball inside and ball yeah. that was coming across the field from the left to the right, bouncing in five. That's an ideal ball for Jodine. I asked you I asked you when you came into the studio earlier on, Ger, how the feeling was down in Clare. You said you were feeling good today. Obviously disappointed with that. Yeah, feeling good. I, you can put it down to the, to the big difference in the team there was the level of skill that Cork has. Cork's skill was way, way superior to players. It's all right having big players, big rough players in the league when the game is slow and all that, they'll get great scores for you. Down here you need nippy, fast players and Cork proved that they'll. Skill wins out in Turles. Yeah. Skill wins out in huge games like this. You, you, can, you can have all your intensity that you, uh, uh, that, that you like, but you must have skill. Yeah. And the skill of the Cork defence is absolutely yeah. unbelievable. Now, I think Clare didn't help that cause by playing their extra man out around the middle of the field. Sure. Just lobbing ball inside the Pat Mulcahy or to Brian Murphy, who are loose inside. You know, even though the fellow outside the field looks great, he yeah. he's in the yeah. ball. Let's but have a look at the stats, lads, from the thing, just to yeah. see if they tell us anything about today's game. Um, I mean, the, 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 one, the funny no. thing, I mean, I suppose, Michael, uh, on this as well, is there was no goal today, and Jodine was, was, was the one man maybe that threatened to get a goal in that, in that first half period as well. Clare have struggled in the last five outings to get a goal against Cork. I think it was 1997 since they last scored a goal against Cork. And never threatened to score a goal. And never threatened And haven't threatened to score a goal. Coming up today, I said if Cork were to lose, Clare would have to get two or three goals. And yeah. they didn't threaten to get goals today against, against uh, that Cork defence. No, they did not. OK, yeah. lads, here on the Sunday game, the action may have ended for the day, but there's plenty to catch up on all around the country. It's the Sunday Game Plus, and that's right after this commercial break. Galway and these places, you know, so we were just happy to go over and back into a Munster final. We came out of this last year and we were within a point of getting into the Ireland final. And uh, we were bitterly disappointed we lost by six points to tip last year, which was a bigger disappointment maybe. So, you know, it was just, there's no, there's no easy answer, there's no quick fix, it's just work and work and work and stay at it and claw our way out of that group and get up to Dublin for an Ireland quarter final hopefully and take it from there. You're three days away from the ultimate if you get there. So, you know, we won't chuck in the towel, we'll, we'll, we'll battle on to the end. Siddle Farrell joins me on the couch for analysis of that game. Siddle, you're very welcome. Come here, in your newspaper column yesterday, you, you predicted a clear victory. How did you get it so wrong? Well, I thought that they would... I, I knew the Grattan that they'd be living for this state all year. And, uh, like, you know, they did for the first 15 minutes. And they really had them shook six points or two up. But after that, the class told. Cox had back on midfield past Pat the Majestic. Even the football I saw today and tonight, the, the five of them could play on the football team because they're athletes as well as great skillful players. They eventually took over. It cock forwards, hassled and hustled like, and you had Brian Cock come back to himself. Joe Dean was probably better than he has been for the last two or three years. And all over the field, they were completely on top. And the only wonder was at the end of the game, Pat, they'd only won by six points because they seemed to be completely in control. Now, Clare would have done very well against most other teams, but just Cock at the moment are in a different class. Yeah. 
four cock starting forwards scored one point from play between them. That doesn't matter, Pat. There was no sumo wrestling here like the matches in the north. For God's <laughs> sake, like our, 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 our wrong blood of juice. They were tipped around. It doesn't matter who scores. Like today, now you had the ball being fed into the full forward line. Last year, it was never fed in there much. Joe Dean was in top today. Brian Cochran, last year, I fell low and had a better game than Brian, when, he, when he's due with Brian Cochran. But today, it was, it was back. To Brian Cochran won well because there was a lot of ball coming in, a lot of diagonal ball crisscross, and the cock forwards. Great, great, great skill. Lock Dancers is all very well having big, strong fellas score to get a few points in the league. That playing in Turles is about small, skillful hurlers. Should we be cloning Joe Deans for every other county? Well, so other counties have the likes of Joe Dean, but the ones I'd love to clone, I know he's very good, Joe Dean. And like, okay, you have to have the skill. The big strength is okay, but you have to have the skill. But like, the guys, the, the engine of this team, Pat, is Garner, Corden, or Halpin, Jerry O'Connor, Tom Kinney. They're the five really to take the pressure off the full back line and see right. that lovely ball. You've picked out analysis of where Cork won this game and you're highlighting really that, that triangle in the half backs into field. They were, they were the key. They're, they're the engine. But like starting off today, like you know, to me it was a very big game for Brian Cork because he would have failed last year, Pat, even though the one I learned that he lost his duel with Brian Lohan. But yeah. today now it's a completely different ball game. Here's the ball coming out of here. He catches it, he has to work very hard, he's going down his favourite right side, but no one sticks with him and eventually he half knocks off him. Now Brian goes back down, takes another belt through, bangs it over the bar. Now this is early on when Cork needed a score. Now this fellow was on fire today. Jordan Kitchen great ball on sky. Fantastic <laughs> shot here and a brilliant double save because Fitzy blocks him, gets it out again. Dean was winning these kind of balls all day. He didn't do that for the last two years, but a great, great save Risk. when clearly, clearly he needed it. But like Cork quickly now, look at this. This little hand pass up to Jericho. Look, now look at so obviously Kenny the middle opened up, but he had the power to go through the middle and he had the pace. Three clear men go down, go down, go down, and he takes a point. Now there's a cock man loose on the right hand side in the character, but like it's fantastic score. There's nothing you can do about it. Getting great catch here. Look at this. Like an athlete, this guy could play for uh, you know, lovely ball in it here. Look, everyone thinks it's going wide, but Jordan is sharp there, comes out. Now again, he do, the angle isn't great here, he rides the tackle here, comes back and he just floats it over on his left side. He was a light base, scored nine points, four from play. Like, and you have guys like these around, look at this, gets a good wallop here for Lohan, but again, effortlessly floats it over. So Cork had the class, and the class will and tell when you have the fitness. Well, come here, look, four of those player boys were there in 95, six of them were there in 97. Now you look at a bunch of fellas who were going to the well once too often and finding a try. But I would think Anthony Daly Pat has, uh, has tried to find fellas, and he pro this, this was his best 15. Now he rejigged the team at the start. That was about to happen because it was kind of. It was, it was, it was they were tired. They looked like meat, didn't they? Well, they, they didn't look like anyone. Before. They didn't look tired the first 15 minutes. Pat, they were made look tired by a better team. It's simple as that. You, you kind of put out, you know, you can have a new player 15 out the next day. There won't be that many chances the next day. They were just outclassed by a better team. And as Daly said there at the end, they have to take their beat and, and get back into it. How do you stop that cock? That's cock five from dominating that half backs into field. Well, you want to be very good for a start. Uh, Jerry was saying today that the puck outs were too long, but when Fitzy tried to poke him short, he was caught as well. Poked him, poked him short, you get caught, poked him long. You have to try to break down. Now, how you're going to do that is another thing. Maybe Kilkenny at the moment are a team that could take on cock, you know. Well, again, they're going to have to, they, they can let the cock half back to midfield get on top. Now, maybe clearly the last by kind of having the three men out yeah. midfield. Now, that, that worked for a certain time. defense. Well, <laughs> we could get down the Durries and, 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 and Tyrone, put, put the 12 men behind the ball, but in, in Holden Patch, do that, and they score from outside. Come here. Man of the match, contenders? Well, like, look at it. All the half back them are contenders. The two boys midfield, uh, Kenny and, 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 and Jer Jerry. Uh, so, Jerry. who'd you go for? The, the two boys have performed fantastic, but the man, the man for the 70 minutes had a fantastic game. Even Cork were going bad, Ronan Corden. That was a shadow of a doubt. Brilliant game. And last year against Clare in the semi final, he was taken off. Well, that's the fortunes of Wobby. He had a great hold on, but he's, he's a great holder, a great touch player. Like, and things are, you can see him here, like, like he's an example to any young holder, really. He has, has the class, has two sides. Now, this, he just doesn't belt the ball. Look, look, look at that, he wasn't docked here, but like, just gets a little flick out. Here again, like, has a little look up. He wasn't going to drive it first, and he goes for his own pint and bangs it over the bar. When things were going wrong, he was standing up, but eventually all the half back in the midfield came into it. So well done, a deserving man of the match, Ronan Corden. After the game in Tullus, he spoke with our reporter, Tony O'Donoghue. Yes, after a magnificent display in this afternoon's Guinness Munster Senior Hurling semi final, Cork's Ronan Corran is the Sunday game man of the match. Congratulations, Ronan. Thanks, sir. Hopefully the first of many awards for you this season. Did you enjoy the game today? Yeah, it was a great game. I suppose you have to enjoy every game when you're there. Um, I suppose uh, there's something special about the Munster Championship down here in Turles. You have to enjoy every bit, so it was a great day for Cork. 